welcome to my sewing room. I am so thrilled about the show that we have for you today. It is going to be all about easy, 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 super easy Madeira applique. My very close friend, Patty Jo Larson, will be here to show you her brand new method. Okay, let me just show you the beauty of Madeira applique. It has been one of the most popular techniques that we've ever had on Martha's Sewing Room, and I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It's very, very tailored. This is the next color I'd like to share with you. This one is the white and the pink and has a little bit of hand embroidery, but I happen to believe that most of us now are doing a little bit more, maybe a little bit more machine embroidery than hand embroidery, but either way, it is just perfect. You don't have to have clothes if you want to do this easy Madeira applique. This is an adorable placemat for Christmas with a Christmas fabric in the middle with all kinds of toys and Christmas trees and snowmen and bells and a beautiful red Madeira applique border around it. This beautiful dress has a Madeira applique uh, bolera, a little to the waist dress, and beautiful Madeira applique angel sleeves over the little traditional puff sleeve. Even beautiful linens for the home can be used for Madeira applique. This is one of the prettiest towels. I think this would be magnificent for a wedding gift or maybe just for a gift for you, for your own bathroom to make it really pretty, just a beautiful guest towel. This is one of the most beautiful dresses, I think. The gorgeous hand embroidery with a beautiful Madeira applique, sort of a curved and scalloped uh, collar, absolutely magnificent and beautifully tailored. Now this little dress, uh, Patty Jo Larson made for her daughter Joanna, it has the beautiful Madeira applique on the collar with machine embroidery. And the most precious thing about this dress, I want to show you right now. Let me, let me pull it out for you. Uh, Joanna was helping uh, Patty Jo sew, and she picked up a pair of scissors. Joanna's just a little tiny girl, and she made a little clip through all four areas. So Patty Jo even did Madeira applique all around in all four of those areas just to give an added special little touch. And now if you will come with me over to the technique boards, we really have a fabulously new and easy Madeira applique technique for you. Let me share with you this fabulously easy Patty Jo Larson method for Madeira applique. First of all, if you, here is your skirt and I'm going to fold it in half. We're going to do a scallop skirt here. Here is my whole skirt. I have folded it in half and traced off the scallops, which will be on the bottom of the skirt. Next, I put a water-soluble basting thread through my needle in the sewing machine. You put regular sewing thread in the bobbin. Now, I'm going to stitch along using a very short stitch, a 1.5 stitch length. Stitch perfectly through those two layers. Remember, it's folded in half. Next, come in and trim all of the excess and come in and do your, little, uh, do your little notching. Just go ahead and make little clips all along it so you can turn it right side out. Just get one piece and the other. Now let's see if I can do this and then turn it right side out and use your little point turner to make it just perfect. In other words, go up in there and push the little points. You can use anything you want to. Now it looks just perfect. Now here is the magic. You spray, since you've got water soluble basting thread, you do a little bit of spray either the, the, uh, out of your iron or spray starch or just dampen it. Then you iron it completely dry and then watch what happens. I've already pulled part of it. You just pop it open just like that and then let me show you a perfect scalloped edge with everything already folded under and done for you has been done so quickly. Then you take the skirt, since I'm going to put this on the bottom of the skirt, sew it to the bottom of the skirt, my Madeira applique piece, do a straight stitch, then simply fold it up to the top and come along and put your stabilizer underneath it. And here we've done a wing needle Madeira applique stitch, or you could just use a zigzag stitch if you don't have a Madeira applique stitch. Now I'm going to come over here. I have the privilege of having as my guest today, my very dear friend, Patty Jo Larson, who is the inventor of this method. Patty Jo, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Martha. You know, you're the reason I came up with this idea in the first place. Tell me about it. You asked me to teach the Madeira dress at your school in Huntsville. And prior to that, I had only done a little Madeira applique. And honestly, I didn't really enjoy doing it. I have always loved the look, but it wasn't that easy. I found that right. if I wasn't having fun doing it, 
it. I didn't want to put my students through that either. So I knew with the new products out, you, you can always come up with a different method. And I thought long and hard, Martha. Oh, show it to us. I'll oh. tell you. Um, I think that necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> what I'd like to show you first is the bracket hem on the dress that I made for Joanna. Starts with a long strip of fabric. You know when you're making a dress, uh, you use the full width of your 45 okay. inch nilona. So you'll have two, two uh, side seams, so you'll have two pieces of fabric that's your bracket hem. Now I wanted to come up with methods for marking that was going to be quick and easy for a classroom situation where it, where it doesn't take all morning to mark the bottom of the skirt. So um, what I came up with was if you have ever used the iron-on tearaway stabilizer, it's kind of slick on one side and it will stick to your fabric temporarily and then you tear it away. Well what I did was start with a strip of stabilizer the entire length of your bracket hem piece, the pink piece of fabric. And what you do, and I learned this from you, Martha, a quick way of marking is to simply fold it in half and press it, fold it in half and press it again, fold it in half, and I'm, not, I'm just finger pressing, I'm sorry to say press, because you don't want to iron this, it'll stick together. <laughs> okay, now when you have it folded to the smallest size you want, then simply pin it, and in one cut, you uh, bracket hem is, is like an outside circle, and then an inside circle, similar to this, like an, like an outer and an inner. It's a little different than a scallop. It's kind of an inside Kind of an up and a down, scallop. yeah. Right. And once you've cut that one time, you have made an entire pattern the length of your oh. pink piece of fabric. Oh. oh. Okay? Now all you need to do is quickly at your ironing station, just simply press this pattern. It's like a template now. And it will mark your pink fabric. And what I mean by it will mark it the top edge of this white, if you can see the difference here, that's where you'll do your stitching. Okay? Oh, all right. And it okay. doesn't slip and it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't disappear on you, so it's very easy. Now the next step, you take this over to your sewing machine with your wash away thread. Now that's a double layer now. Just you're like you're we had sewing the two layers together okay. and then you simply straight stitch and follow the top edge of that white. That was the easiest see, marking isn't that I ever the saw easy, in my quickest whole life. Marking? Now, oh, Martha, to show you the, re the rest of the steps, I'd like to show you a, a little bit simpler, shorter piece of fabric. So okay. I'll, I'll just reach over here to get the, um, the little tea towel that I'm going to demonstrate, the, the Madeira hem on the tea towel. So it kinda, we'll kind of do this again. This little border hem is, is smaller. And so you'd start with a strip of pink that's as wide as your, as your ha uh, hand towel here. And this one is, is not very many. Um, you only fold it once, so you fold it in half and press your little piece of stabilizer to it. That, that method of marking is so easy with that stabilizer. This, see, I'm even learning something over, over and above the boards we had prepared. So you stitch it. Oh. Now you can use the wash away basting thread in the top and bobbin as well. Oh, um, and I did do that. It, it seems then you don't have any thread left when you're done. It just completely dissolves. Makes it a little bit easier to do right. that. Right. All right. Well, I didn't so know So you're that. stitching right along the top of your pattern there, the, t the tearaway stabilizer. Now the tearaway stabilizer, it was really designed to use with like machine embroidery and such, but you can keep this pattern for another time because once you peel it off, it will restick over and over again. All right. So it's kind of nice to have uh, a pattern that you can save. Now the next step would be trimming away. You want only about an eighth of an inch seam allowance left on your uh, Madeira piece. And then if there is a pretty small curve, the next step would be snipping and clipping and you snip for the inside curves and you clip for the outside curves. This isn't a very deep uh, oh, curve, yeah. so there isn't a lot of snipping that's needed, but it's important at the fold here that you snip down to that one right there. I don't know if I can do it with this big scissors. We can do that later. Now the next step is to turn it right side out and press it. And it, this is, this is um, the part that just works so well with the wash away basting wow. thread. I feel like you can get such a nice crisp press and everything that's Madeira, is kind of, um, a lot of times it's a mirror of itself, so you only have to stitch half of it, and, and, you, and you end wonderful. up with the whole thing turned under. So once it's turned to the right side, give it a good press, and then if you have a, an iron that has mist, the next step would be to mist it, so you get rid of the thread, wet it a little bit, press it dry, and you know you use starch, and that works good too, to well, just anything that wets it. 
you know, we were teaching this technique in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, and we, everyone didn't have an iron to work with, you know, so we just, we thought it would be easier just to use the starch and, and then the get spray the, the irons in the classroom. So once you peel it apart, oh, there just, you have it all turned just under. magic. And oh, I didn't get that in wet. You gotta get it wet <laughs> to be sure the wash away. Yeah. Overshot here. Okay, and then the next step, then once it's pressed and turned, then you'll sew it to the bottom of your, your little um, tea towel. And I did embroidery on my towel oh, first. Oh, that's so pretty. Patty Jo, what a wonderful gift. And it doesn't take much time either. It doesn't take either. long at all. Or it's, much money either. Right. The bottom, after, you, after you've done some embroidery um, on your towel, where you'll sew your, your Madeira hem is you stitch the wrong side of the dress with the right side of the border hem. Okay. So that's how you sew it on. And that can be just a little narrow stitch, a narrow seam allowance. And just then a, just sew it down to the just bottom. Just stitch it to the bottom of your, this would be either, you know, your skirt or whatever. Uh huh. And then the next step, and I'll just use my scissors to cut my thread. The next step then is to bring it to the right side. And a lot of times if you don't have an iron, the, this next step is kind of uh, important too, is the pressing to, the, to bring this around to the right side. And I like to use a method I call based pressing. I use oh. an edge joining foot that comes with my sewing machine, that comes with my heirloom kit, I should say. And it has a little guide in the center okay, of the foot. Okay. And this edge joining foot will help guide me so I can baste. I'll select baste on my sewing advisor here. Especially for a long skirt, it'd be nice. Yes, to it's that. really nice to, be easier, to, but have, I think to have it all set so you don't um, slip when you're doing your pin stitching. The three things that I found is important with Madeira is, you know, the accurate marking, the, the nice pressing under of the edge, and then finally, the pin stitching if you if you have everything so it doesn't slip. So this is um, just using your basting stitch on your sewing machine and, and your baste pressing instead of taking it to the iron because that way you don't see any of the white towel slipping to the to the right side. You know what? And then you're going to do your Madeira stitch on that and then you're going to have a beautiful tea towel. You're going to put your wing needle on to usually you, you can wing use needle? wing needle or a large uh, a large Regular needle, like a and it'll leave a needle. sweet little hole. Mm -hmm. Okay, or a wing needle, but a little, a little. If you want real delicate, just use a large. Just needle. use a large needle and well, stitch Patty Joe, thank you so much for sharing your magical technique, and the whole world will now know about the Patty Joe Larson oh. technique. Thank you so much, and now we have some lovely lingerie for you. magnificent camisole can be used either as lingerie or for sleepwear when you put tap pants with it. This, fa this camisole is absolutely beautiful. It has the uh, Swiss Batiste for the base fabric and the Madeira is done out of linen. I love this motif, this Madeira motif uh, that is in a sort of a, a triangular or diamond shape. It has a little bit of the lace in the middle, a little bit of silk ribbon embroidery to cover up the center part. Now let me just share with you how easy it is to do Madeira and do that wonderful little treatment on the beautiful camisole. First of all, you fold it in half, just like Patty Jo showed you a few minutes ago. Then I'm with my basting thread, my wash away basting thread, I stitch this line right here. And for the motif cutout, I'm going to come in and stitch this line. Now, once again, I trim it and clip it, and then I'll have the fun of pulling it apart. That's always so much fun after you press it dry. Then you pull it apart, and I have it all finished right here to show you how I've pulled it apart. And now I'm ready to go over to the sewing machine. I've already started sewing this. I'm using a Madeira applique stitch with a 100 wing needle. So you can see how pretty it is to stitch it down with a true Madeira applique stitch. And I'm gonna to come to the corner and I'm going to turn the corner and begin to sew again. So I will go right around the corner and now I have put the beautiful Madeira applique stitch and I will continue sewing. Now the one thing I wanted to share with you too was how to make that absolutely fabulous uh, center motif with the with the uh, shaped lace. Okay, I'm going to make a lace diamond. The first thing I do is trace off the uh, 
the four pieces here. All right, pin at the top, pin at the bottom. I'm going to come out to make my first miter. I'm going to put a pin on the outside. I already have a pin on the inside. Fold the lace back on itself. Remove the inside pin. And I'll come up here ready to make the next one. Wait a minute, let me pull it in this angle. Okay, pin at the bottom, pin at the top. Fold the lace back on itself. Remove the one that goes through two layers, which is again the center pin, and come over here. A perfect miter has been folded in. Okay, pin on the inside is already there. Pin on the outside. Fold it back on itself. Remove the one that's right here in the middle that's hold all, has held all of them. And I'm going to, and I'll stick one more pin in there since I released that one. And I'll pull it down, and we're going to do this one just like we close off the bottom of all miters. I will pull it back underneath itself and pin it, and I have a beautiful lace miter. Now, once again, you know we have the principle of mush it. If there is anything sticking out anywhere, we're just going to go in there and mush it a little bit. The next step, here I have my little diamond, is to come in and zigzag down over all of these miters. And I have a little hole in the middle, so I'm going to have a little trick to make that little hole all pretty in the middle. But I'll come in and zigzag and trim away the little darts. After all of that is done, then I'm going to take my silk ribbon thread and I'm going to do a little silk ribbon lazy daisy in the middle. And then the little silk ribbon lazy daisy, just a, a little knots, little French knots at the end. And I'm going to bring this camisole back once again to show you how perfectly exquisite that center treatment is. I'd like for you to look right here. Do you see how pretty it is when you shape the lace just the way I showed you? You're doing miters, and there's the little lazy daisy in the middle, and the two little lazy daisy or French knots on the side. And of course, I'm going to pin stitch the little motif right in the center also. Next, I have a really, really neat craft for you. This is a no-sew, hot glue gun, quick project for your sewing room. An adorable scissors holder. This one is made with a pot holder, a purchase pot holder. You can see you just slip your big scissors right down in there with a little bow. And this one is so cute. We call it the scissor monster and has little eyes that have been glued on. So you can tell your kids, when you look at this, those eyes are looking at you and don't touch my scissors. The one that you use a little pot holder for really is just a hot glue gun. You take your purchase pot holder, fold it over, glue it together, and get a cute little bow and glue it down to. Of course, you could tack it by hand if you wanted to. Now, this one, I guess, really has a tiny bit of sewing and a tiny bit of serging. We've stitched in Scissor Monster here. All you do is uh, curve your corners and do a little serger all the way around there. As you can see, I've done that, serged all the way around it, fold it over, glue it, and then glue these wonderful little eyes. You can get them in any craft store. That's the Scissor Monster, and if you're like I am when my kids were little, I would say, don't touch my good scissors. And that is all there is to making a quick and easy gift or something for your own home to have scissors really handy. And now I have a beautiful doll dress for you. I absolutely love this dropped waist doll dress that Cecil Elizabeth has on. The neckline has a beautiful tatting with entredeau, a really wonderful Madeira piece on the neckline that has a little machine embroidery. The same machine embroidery is extended over here with the Madeira piece on the sleeve and entredeau and tatting gathered, well really not gathered, it's sewn on straight. Then let's come on down the dress. This is one of the most beautiful Madeira applique hems, which has been, the Madeira is linen, the dress is batiste, and the Madeira is linen. And this is what I really want to share with you. Let me just pull up the under, the under, really the under dress. It's not a slip, it's attached to the dress. Do you see that pretty little feather stitch? And the tatting has been attached by machine, but it looks like it's been attached by hand. Now, once again, let's refresh this whole technique of the very, very easy Madeira. I fold it in half. I fold the whole skirt in half, stitch on the line, excuse me, draw on the lines, and then stitch using the wash away basting thread. Then I come in and trim and turn it, and then I press it, and then I have the fun of popping it open so it becomes a finished piece which I lay down on, well, first of all, I have to stitch it to the bottom of the skirt, then flip it up, 
And now then after I flipped it up, oh, that is so easy. I just love this technique. After I flipped it up, I go ahead and do the pin stitch. Now this is what we're going to share with you now. The tatting, I'm going to attach it to the entredeau, and what I want to do is just attach this little string to the entredeau, and it will look exactly as if it has been done by hand. Right over here on this side, you can see the zigzagging was indeed on the entredeau, but it only caught the tatting right there, so that little string that runs along the tatting has been caught in the stitching. Now the tatting on the bottom, we used a typical roll and whip. This is what it looks like when it's finished on the bottom. Once again, you see the string of the tatting has been zigzagged and it looks as if you have truly gone in there and attached it by hand. Now in order to do this, I'm going to leave a little bit of a seam allowance on the fabric. I'm going to use a regular zigzag. I'm going to attempt to zigzag only that little string. And this is where my little shish kebab stick will come in really handy. I have already gotten this started over here. Remember, I leave a little seam allowance. Now, I've set my, it's just a regular zigzag. My length is a 0.5. My width is a 4.0, and I might take that width down to 3.0. I'm going to use my shish kebab stick here. So I will just do my rolling. And by the way, the needle does go all the way off the fabric. So see, now it's time for it to catch it. All right, I'm going to pull that little string that holds the tatting, and I'm going to very carefully, oh, hang on a minute, let me grab it. I'm going to zigzag going all the way off the fabric, and then when it comes to the little point in the tatting, it will attach it. Okay, I'm going to zigzag again. Remember, my zigzag is wide. It's going all the way off the fabric, and it is rolling and whipping it in. I'm holding it very carefully with my little wooden shish kebab stick, so I can zigzag the little string that goes at the top of the tatting only, and you can probably see out the back of the sewing machine here that it looks exactly as if it has been stitched on by hand, although I have rolled and whipped it with a traditional method. But hang on, be sure you use the wooden shish kebab stick when you're holding this and not something metal because it would hurt the sewing machine if you sew over something metal to hold it with. And then let me show you one more time just exactly how beautiful it is when it is attached. It looks just as if you have attached it only at this little point, at this little point, at this little point, and at this little point. It's absolutely beautiful when you just roll and whip that little string that holds the tatting together. And it really does look like handwork. And now won't you come along with me to my attic where I have a very special man's nightgown for you. I have a very special treasure for you in my attic today. This man's nightgown belonged to Sue Houseman's great-grandfather. This is an absolutely wonderful example of a man's nightgown, and men did indeed wear nightgowns. This is, and it's probably from the, early, oh, from the 1860s or 1870s. It has a beautiful Swiss embroidery, a ruffle on this side. The center panel is really, really interesting. It has puffing and then the beautiful flat fell seams and then the ruffle that goes all the way down the front. I find it very interesting. Right here, oh, you know, about three quarter, about a third of the way down is another ruffle that goes around and then the panel just goes all the way down the front. It is very interesting in that the panel goes all the way down the very front and there are hidden buttons behind the front panel and indeed the buttons go all the way down the front. This fabric is a, a heavy uh, cotton fabric which obviously has held up through the years since it's about 150 years old. It is a real treasure for you to try to keep the garments that have been in your family but if you don't have any of those, just go ahead and make some and, let, and make your own family heirlooms. And then you'll have some treasures that your family will share with other family members in the years to come. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. And I hope to see you next time.